Don't you want it? 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 Boogie. Welcome to the Dead Lights Podcast. Yeah. I'm your host, Sam. And today with me, I have a special guest, Connor. Hey, yo. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Welcome to the Dead Lights house. Thank you. It's a it's a lovely house yes. that we have here. It, was it uh, as lovely as the house that we saw in this film, mm, do you think? I, it's lovelier. It's not as spooky, scary. Mm, not as spooky. Well, um, the not house, as bloody. not as bloody. That's good. Yeah. I think we have that going for us at least. Mm -hmm. Well, we just watched House from 1977, directed by Nobuhito Obayashi and written by Shiho Katsura. Lovely. A schoolgirl and six of her classmates mm -hmm. travel to her aunt's country home, which turns out to be haunted. Wow, 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 wow. I mean, pretty simple. And that is really what went on. And yeah, it was a simple explanation. But this film is something mm, else. Nothing but simple. Yeah. Whether it's uh, their practical visual effects or their choice of songs and just you the, know the so acting the, yeah the acting the transitions everything was just pretty wacky it was out there it was out sure. there yeah, yeah so i i did look up um the director obayashi before we watched it mm -hmm. and the one big thing that i kept seeing was how big of a experimental filmmaker pioneer sure. he was uh, for Japanese filmmaking in the 60s. So that, I think, experimental filmmaking definitely rings true in this film. Yeah, it is to the like to the T that is experimental. Mm -hmm. And we saw, I mean, you mentioned throughout the movie, it was like, oh, this kind of reminds me of Kill Bill. So you can see the um, inspiration from others, from his directing and cinematography. Yeah. Well, I think we should just get right into the first first category is the can Let's dive in because i think that is a huge part of this film is yeah. the actual filmmaking you mm -hmm. know what we're seeing and you just said it we've seen things taken from this movie in so many other things yeah so i think that is a testament to the uh influence of this film which is great and i mean you could pretty much take any frame from this film and it would be a a pretty interesting picture at least oh for sure uh, it was like fever dreams the entire hour and 30 minutes mm -hmm, roughly mm -hmm. um yeah it was like song montages like in from the beatles like psychedelic era to just like really sappy um like soap opera yeah weird very just, uh hazy yeah gloss over mm -hmm. everything really driving home that like fantasy style not a single scene was lit or shot in a way that would be true to reality which i did appreciate a lot about this film is they set out to make an experimental surrealist film and they did that a hundred percent through and through they did not l let us have a breath mm -hmm. of reality in yeah. this film at all and the first scene the first shot we see is fantasy and gorgeous's like school day i think taking a picture taking of her. pictures but then it goes into actual reality mm -hmm. um which yeah. still is like lit like a soap opera yeah like you said and sometimes in like slow-mo and just bouncing around mm -hmm. lots of different odd cuts and just uh yeah. I mean, we had the experience of, oh, the movie's starting. Oh, yeah. I they thought we thought it was, that. we thought it was like the production company. Yeah. Animation it or was whatever. boxed off. And we we're like, oh, this is like a production company's, you know, still getting my notes together. Yeah. Oh, no, we're going. Oh, no. OK, shit. Yeah. No. And then it was just relentless mm -hmm. in as far as the style goes. We kind of already mentioned the lighting um, mm -hmm. and the coloring because they were using different colors to use highlights like reds and blues and greens to just fill the space yeah. rather than our traditional colors. But also we were ha we had um, a practical practical sets, um, yeah. a lot of built sets, which were really cool. 
Yeah, I think all of it was pretty much built in studio. Yeah. A lot of backdrops of cityscapes or uh, mountain scenes, yeah. sunsets, which were like honestly very beautiful to look at. Like really the cool. Sunsets were incredible. Mm -hmm. um, so like kudos to the artist. Yeah. And making it feel, I don't know, just you knew it wasn't actually like in real life. Is the camera angles the they they loved fans Love just fans. on one particular character? Though. Yes. Oh my goodness, she her whole thing was fans. Yeah. How they build the sets, how they shoot within the sets, and then how they light the sets too, combined together with this crazy editing style that they have, where we're getting flashes of maybe fantasies, maybe memories. Right. Um, we're seeing a lot of just like um, vignettes or mm -hmm. um, like zoomed in circle. Yes, you know exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of shapes within the yeah. frame. Love the shapes. It's a lot. I mean, the whole time, like we said, it's doing this the whole time. So it's a lot to keep with. But at a certain point, I was like, are they trying to make this kind of like how a teenage mind would work just kind yeah. of everywhere all over the place you don't really know you know what's going on within yourself and mm. therefore like your view on the world can be kind of just like chaotic and crazy yeah if i didn't think of that but that's that's great it's hard to say enough about the the filmmaking in this movie because there's so much like every scene like is just really cool there's either a mm -hmm. cool lighting or like crazy uh, chroma key effects and like I don't know there's I mean body parts floating around like <laughs> cra crazy shit like, yeah like yeah animated body parts and then clearly like mannequin but mm -hmm. you know supposed to be real life body there, parts and blood yeah in different colors too there's like blue and green blood I think mm -hmm. at one point uh, the music really stood out to me the soundtrack mm -hmm. because it's like three maybe four songs that they just play over and over and over again yeah. you hear the you know that piano tune which i'm probably gonna fall asleep to tonight over and over just and over da, da, da. i can't recreate it for some reason but um, it kind of became the like this foreboding thing mm -hmm. of like oh you knew when that piano music was coming something's gonna happen something bad's gonna happen in the house yeah. but it reminded me a lot of uh twin peaks hmm Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if David Lynch got inspired by uh, this director and the soundtrack being soapy and just kind of all over the place. Definitely. I feel like he had to have seen this movie yeah. before he made Twin Peaks. But yeah, because it does go back. It kind of is that weird soap opera, small town vibe mm -hmm. where everything can seem dreamy, but there's also this like bad under layer going on in the film too right which i think i think that kind of leads us nicely into the next part uh which is the meat, yeah. the meat. It, what it actually is trying to talk about which you know it's it's tough to pick out things mm -hmm. that are going mm -hmm. on yeah, yeah. you know thematically because of the amount of surrealist filmmaking going on but what I do think kind of holds true through the entire film is this like this beauty that we see everywhere. Like everything is fantastical. Everything that gorgeous, who is, I think our main character for the most part, yeah, that's definitely. who we follow. She sees the world um, in a very fantastical way, a very rose petal glasses uh, kind of lens that she has on everything. And especially because this is her aunt's house mm -hmm. and she's returning to where her mother, who she lost, grew up. So she's kind of returning to memories of her. And as the movie goes on, she seems to kind of just get lost in the memories and in the fantasy and this like glossy, beautifulness is blinding her from the fact that her friends are being picked off in the house right. and eaten by her aunt so she can have eternal life or something. Yeah. So there's this like idea of like ignorant bliss or, or blissful ignorance. Right. Just like being just totally blinding yourself from the ugliness of the world. Being a teenager, 
pretty much. She's just like doing her own thing in her own world, which is funny because like there's also a character named Fantasy. Yeah. And she's picked out as like, oh, you're, you know, you're dreaming again. That's not actually happening when in reality people were getting picked off and eaten. Mm -hmm. And they're like, ah, Fantasy, come on. But even through the other characters, too, like it took them so long to admit that something was going on. And then it's too late. Yeah. By the time they actually figure out what's going on, it's it's yeah, too late. Crow, the logical one, took forever to realize what was happening. You'd think she'd be the first one to figure it out. Yeah. She's nope. just like, no, nah, that's not logical. Nope. Yeah, well. It's an illusion. Fantasy's dreaming the again. The piano ate someone, okay, bro. Come on. That was, I think, the moment where she was like, oh, shit, I think something's going on here. Yeah. Something weird might be going on w here. Wait a second. <laughs> I think... Oh, um... Is this a house eating people? The cat with its sparkly eyes. The cat. Yeah. I mean, it was a cute kitty cat. It was a cute kitty cat. And, you know, the cat was definitely a motif that they were mm -hmm. pulling through the whole film. I mean, we've talked about it before on this podcast. Cats are a, a big symbol for bad omens. Right there on the shirt. So they've literally followed this cat to the ant house mm -hmm. it was showing them the way opening doors opening doors pointing meowing in the direction yeah with its little paw Meow. point point and it led them to their deaths that's another example of them like having this literal uh literary sign pulling them to a place and they're still ignoring that and just like eh. or in reality summer vacay it's gonna be an awesome Ooh, summer vacation mr togo's coming Ooh, so hot. he's so dreamy and manly yeah but yeah it took me until they described and explained the movie to me and i love when movies do that they're like let's break it down <laughs> this is exactly what you're slow people like me it really helps <laughs> perfect well i'm glad they did that yeah because uh, they did do that and it's just funny as well. It's just, it's great. You kind of expect it at that point in this movie. Like the movie has gone in so yeah. many directions that we might as well just explain it. Love does not perish. Promises do not perish, but bodies do. Mm -hmm. That was the thing too. It was like, yeah, they use that word love mm -hmm. at the end. And I think that, you know, we hear love. It's like supposed to be like a, Again, a beautiful, good thing. Dreamy. Dreamy, awesome. But in this case, I think they were kind of using love as like a bad thing. It's a toxic love, essentially. Yeah, her love, the aunt's love for her future husband who went off to war and promised to come back, didn't come back. And now it's like eating away at her. Mm -hmm. So she wants to, you know, make sure all unmarried girls die <laughs> not sure her motives <laughs> not sure know. yeah because also like was it like i'm waiting forever for him so i need to be alive forever yeah I'm maybe running, i'm running out of unmarried women <laughs> yeah that's why Shit. everyone disappeared except for the one watermelon man i'm a watermelon salesman <laughs> yeah only watermelons though <laughs> don't even think about other fruits only fucking watermelons don't even mention bananas nope. i will nope. lose my shit if not, you talk about bananas not the b word all right let's get to the next one which is a cook which is actually how they like present these themes mm -hmm. um and i mean with this kind of film i think that you know it really is all about committing a hundred percent to this surrealist style when it comes to the cook and they Be did and they did and because if they went halfway with it it would have just felt like weird and like they were trying to be almost like to take it too seriously mm -hmm. but because they just went full-on surrealist i think that that actually works in their advantage because then we can just kind of throw throw away the rule book and be like, okay, anything's possible. Like, yeah, any, can they can do anything. Kung Fu sings and just jump around and, mm -hmm. you know, have body parts flying, you know, whatever. and we can, we can switch from like this, like almost like play, like mm -hmm. shooting format to a, a POV, right. a, like almost like half sped POV at one point. Yeah. He was doing everything. He was literally throwing everything at us. Yeah. It's funny that you say that, like we can, 
not take it as seriously because if they just tuned back the surrealist just a little bit we probably would have been like wait this doesn't make sense right but since it didn't make sense at all it made sense <laughs> we're like oh yeah okay yeah get what he's trying to do now right like why wouldn't there just be a minute scene of the ant and the cat dancing around oh and the, i forgot meow, about meow, that meow, 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 meow. <laughs> very much a misogynistic lens going on through this film mm -hmm. um, between the fact that these girls are being punished because they're unmarried. Um, also the fact that there is this character named Mr. Togo, who was a teacher at their school yeah. who they all have a big crush on really creepy, really creepy. And for some reason he's going to come meet them at the aunt's house. But then when shit starts to hit the fan, they start to have this idea of, oh, Mr. Togo is going to show up and be our knight in shining He's armor. Save us. He's going to save us. The man is going to come in right at the end mm -hmm. and save us. And then there was also like very blatant nudity that was going on that was very unnecessary. Yeah. At certain points. Didn't make any sense. Like, why are we like, hanging? Let's just show some. We need boobs. <laughs> no. We need boobs. <laughs> yeah. So there was this like very misogynistic lens going on. And I think that that was definitely a um reflection of the times i would yeah, think I mean, 1977 yeah yeah kind of trippy psychedelic and you know women in their place and men mm -hmm. being the savior but the man wasn't the savior also and that's true maybe that's part of what he's the director was trying to say that men are seen as saviors but then they don't show up. They fumble like they it in promise. the end. <laughs> they, uh, they fumbled it. They talk about bananas to watermelon man. And now you become a sack of bananas. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what happened there. I think they just kind of like lost steam. We're just like, we got to get rid of this character somehow. And we'll turn him to bananas. Yeah. Something else that I want to mention the cook. Yeah. Is the fact of so many goddamn characters. Like, why did we have to have so many girls go into that house? There was uh, seven. Seven. Okay, let's, we let's got go through them. Melody, fantasy, proof, kung fu, Mac, gorgeous, and sweet. All of them got seven of them. Too many. Way too many. Because for I feel like the first half of the movie, you and I were like, "Is that gorgeous? Yeah, is wait, that fantasy?" Is that? And eventually, the like their character, you know. Mac is always eating. Right. And then fantasy is always daydreaming. So like their names started to make sense. Mac actually, I guess, does make sense. It's not like Big Mac. Hey, Big Mac. And they were like fat shaming her the entire time. The whole time. Shaming that she eats like, hey, uh, food's great. Shut yeah. Shut up, everybody. And she was not fat. Yeah. At all. <laughs> yeah. Just rude. Yeah. They were really rude to Mac. Uh, sweet, for some reason, was always cleaning. She, just, she like I'll help clean up things sweet. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. Too many girls getting lost. It was Honestly, just glad that some of them disappeared before the others because mm -hmm. we didn't need them. They weren't adding to the story. Whittle it down, please. Yeah. Whittle it down. Yeah. Because that was the one thing I felt about. It was hard at some points to pay attention to all the cool stuff that was going on mm -hmm. because I was trying to figure out who is this again? What is their trait? Yeah. Just like cut out two. At least like, why do you need seven of them there? Rules of seven. I guess there's right. that classic rule of seven <laughs> in comedy rules of seven. Rules of seven. Duh. Yeah. We should actually probably get to this scary house Ooh. in the thrill. Um, how scary this thing actually was. Um, not too scary. No, no, no. Not really scary. It was more funny. I would say that. Yeah. Funny, wacky. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean... Slapsticky, for sure. Yeah, slapsticky. I mean, I love practical effects, so mm -hmm. it was, you know... And the animation, the colorization of it all, like the piano coming to life and yeah. bones moving and, yeah. you know, whatever. But mm, I've seen scarier haunted houses. Absolutely, and I don't think their intention was to set out to make a scary movie. It was definitely more of a yeah. fun house kind of mm -hmm. deal that we were in for. It was a ride. Fun house, art house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But what That's I will okay. say is those things that we saw them going for as far as like the, the effects were great. Mm -hmm. um, I loved the, the time. Yeah. Yeah. I loved, loved the, um, the severed head, you know, oh, Max, yeah. Max severed head floating around, biting that her in the butt. The yeah. <laughs> there was also the like, in, 
pillow fight pillow fight from your nightmares i think that was sweet <laughs> yeah yeah sweet, sweet got killed by pillows and mattresses falling on her and then she disappeared or i think she got turned into that doll and the it's cat me. the cat's there again oh of course also, the cat's there. underneath all the mattresses <laughs> cat's always there yeah cat's always there blanche 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 was Blanche, the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Every time something spooky was going on, you saw Blanche in the corner with the green glowy eyes. <laughs> no, 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 I'm gonna make this happen. Because what we learn as we go on through the house is that Auntie mm-hmm. is consuming, literally eating these girls, and then it's giving her life again. She's becoming younger. Yeah. And then at a certain point, she becomes like full form and she's like in the bride. Um mm-hmm outfit back in her bride outfit which yeah. um yeah she started off in a wheelchair mm-hmm. not able to walk and then matt goes missing and she just walks in like hey everybody i can walk now and they're like wait auntie you can walk mm-hmm. she's like yeah i'm fine why the fuck are we pushing you around watermelon this that's like crying or yelling also i yeah. think which oh was yeah Mac. and then she like looked at her and she had like yeah the, fantasy like the little, little eyeball oh yeah, that was gross. That was pretty cool, actually. I like yeah. that. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, say any of it was scary. More, like, just kind of gross. For sure. And, yeah. Yeah. They were surrealist and gross. Yeah, they were definitely going for just, like, the body horror yeah. stuff. And it's not like the blood looked real. No. It was clearly, like, water with red dye. For sure. It. Yes. And, you know, but still, the amount that they used was a little just... Eh. Yeah, it was wacky. Yeah. It was like, yeah, super hyper realistic, Mm -hmm. which is another thing that they did in Kill Bill. Yeah. Definitely another thing that they did. Um, Because, yeah, once we go into this like full form bride thing, there is this fight between her and Kung Fu that is pretty fucking awesome. It was sick. This final fight between the two of them. Yeah. They're like rolling around. Epic fight. Epic fight. They're flying around. Yeah, kudos to her feet and legs just, you know, getting at the the portrait of the cat that was like spitting blood out. Amazing. And red eyes flickering. You hit me in the face. Uh, that's all that it takes to like kill a super evil villain, apparently. Rip up a just, painting of it? Yeah. I okay, good that. to know. It felt like a video game at times. Whenever it did. Kung Fu, I mean, especially when Kung Fu is like in action. And then the end with the whole like river of blood was Mm -hmm. pretty cool too. Yeah. That's what took finally Prof down. Um, And we didn't need to see her swimming naked in it. That's what I was saying. That was another moment of like, she just lost all of her clothes all of a sudden. And yeah, why have to like dive in there and she's just kind of like floating around and then vanishes. Like just, uh, I don't know. gets eaten away from the acid or I don't know. Yeah. That's what I can say. It's like she dissolved in there. Yeah, and fantasy, you know, paddles, you know, gets on her paddle board and paddles over to the stairs and she sees gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But is it gorgeous? Uh, She doesn't care. True. She's calling her mommy. That is true. It was creepy. And gorgeous's breast was out for no reason. Mommy. Mommy. Yeah. Was that the ant that turned into gorgeous? Yeah. Or... Because because that's it, oh then what happened to gorgeous like she was outside just like walking I think around like the ant became gorgeous like embodied her okay. to make sure because she, like gorgeous was in the upstairs after her bath time mm-hmm. and was putting on lipstick in the mirror and then like saw her aunt or her mom oh, I think right and then she burned that could have been like the death of. Gorgeous, gorgeous essentially and the reincarnation of auntie because then she walks down and she's just like totally chill about it mm-hmm. and you know i said like oh she looks like she's possessed like mm-hmm. she's like oh don't worry about it i'll call the police oh the phone's out of order i'll just go walk outside yes and the door's shut and they can't get out and she's just juggling light balls <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think you're, I, I, t- I think you're totally right that was the death of yeah. Gorgeous. And then once uh, Fantasy sees Gorgeous from the Blood River, Blood Lake or whatever, um, 
that goes in between like gorgeous and anti young and old and like present and there's like a reflection in the water or something yeah yeah um and then at the end who comes back but stepmom stepmom mm-hmm. fan yeah um Didn't see her t- from like the very first 10 minutes and yeah. then she's back with all the wind with all the fans and always had like a big I don't know, dressy scarf yeah. thing just blowing in the wind, even inside. Even inside. Didn't Nothing matter. Else was blowing. She was always catching the wind somewhere. Yeah. And essentially, I guess that kind of leaves the movie where the cycle continues. Yeah. Is that where? Because she was going to get married to Gorgeous's dad. Right. And I don't think Gorgeous wanted that. Did not seem like it. Um, I forget why. Why did stepmom come? She was like, I'm going to go think in the countryside. I think, yeah, the dad was like, well, can we get married? Yeah. And then the stepmom's like, I have to think about it. I must go to the countryside to think about it. I want to see her mysterious smile. Like, it looked like a normal smile to me. Lady. Yeah. Like, okay. And so, yeah, then she ended up there really late. Yeah. Just all the antics of the night before. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. unaware of everything again. She's kind of like taken in by this like beautiful, blissful yeah. fans everywhere life. And then I think she's let's shake hands. Let's shake hands. <laughs> and gorgeous. Her auntie is like, hell yeah. Gotcha. Then the cat's there. Blanche. Blanche is back. Yeah. Um, yeah, right, well, let's get to the final ride. Let's get to the final, the no final overall. How entertaining do we think this what was? Ride was it? It was quite a ride. It was a different it ride, was. for sure. A ride I was not expecting. Me too. Me too. I didn't know what to expect. I only read the log line that you sent, and I was like, okay, haunted house, nineteen seventies mm-hmm. Japanese movie. Probably gonna be pretty cool. Might be a little, you know, out there. It was out there. Mm underratedly out there they got that um i had fun yeah i was not scared yeah i agree i think that it was definitely once we got into it once we got into the house and strange things really started to ramp up that's when it started to go i thought Mm -hmm. it took a little too long to get there it was a slow burn and in all the wrong ways yeah and I understand, like, they were trying to introduce us to all these characters. But all I think seven that, of them. Plus I think that, stepmom and dad. Plus stepmom and blah, 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 blah. Blah. And so I think that took them inherently longer to get to the point of us actually getting to the house and the crazy shit to go on. I mm-hmm. think if they had less characters that they needed to introduce at the beginning, we might have been able to get there a little faster. So that was the, my main thing of, like, it took them too long to get to the house. And then once they got into the house, like all of them were so unaccepting of what was going on for so long. I was like, okay, come on. There's a friend. Your friend is actually missing. And introduce characters that weren't seen again. Like the teacher. I don't know. They didn't have to have that scene in school. Other than now knowing, excuse me, that it's summer vacation and we're going to (laughs) go To training camp and oh wait no it's canceled now yeah. we're gonna go t- with gorgeous to her aunt's house yes and our manly creepy teacher mr togo is gonna come along too apparently i hope not yeah <laughs> we don't need that we get it it's summer yeah. the thing that they should have kept well that they did keep of course uh was like gorgeous talking to her mom's photos and being like i miss you mom Yes. stepmom's trying to come in and ruin my life mm-hmm. even though she was just like i don't want to hold your hand like that had backstory that was helpful to know mm-hmm. the girls you know it could have been three of them and it would have been not as long of a movie because there's less people to disappear that's true and i guess with a larger group Oh, it's like kind of that classic haunted house. Like, oh, wait, one's missing. Oh, I'm sure they're just off doing something else. They'll come back. Yes. It does give more space for the characters to be ignorant to what's going on. Yeah. For sure. With and the more to people. Explore the house and see, like, mm-hmm. oh, here's a piano room. Here's some bathroom and some, I don't know, just like going all over the place. Yeah. 
you know, exploring. Um, but just get to it faster. That's yeah, fine. Just, we can have seven characters, but just get to the house faster. Yeah. Just go. It was a fun ride. It was a fun ride. A long ride to get to the top. Yes. Once we got to the to top, the, it was fun. It was definitely downs. fun. Yeah. All right, cool. Wow, House from 1977. House. All right, let's get to these Smash Pumpkin ratings. Pumpkin. Um, do you have any idea out of five Smash Pumpkins what you're what you're thinking for House? I'd probably smash like two and a half, three pumpkins. Pumpkin. I mean, that might be pretty generous. Just thinking, you know, the style is something I have not seen before. Mm -hmm. um, you know... It took me a while to understand what they're trying to say, Fair. but after it was explained to me, I understood. <laughs> they explained it to you. <laughs> yeah. But it was still like, I would watch it and be like, oh, wow, that was like a really wacky movie. I probably won't watch it again, even though I would find things I didn't notice before. Mm -hmm. um, but going into it thinking, I was like, oh, I'm going to get like spooked. I'm going to get scared. You know, that didn't happen. So not rating it as high. Sure. Um also, it said comedy horror. I think it was just comedically bad. Yeah. In the first hour. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if they were really going for comedy. Yeah. I'm not sure if they were really... Yeah, I don't think that they were. I think it was just because it was so stylized in this, like, crazy soap opera reality. It, it just inherently makes it kind of funny. Mm -hmm. I would call it more wacky than yeah. funny. I don't know if I would call, even call it a comedy. I don't know. No, no. There was no punchline. No. Yeah, it was bizarre. Yeah. Definitely glad we watched it. Mm -hmm. And cool to see like other directors, you know, inspired by this film or this, this style. It's always cool to see, you know, origins of surrealist movements. And um, so that was, I appreciate that. Yes. Uh, yeah, three is probably a little too high. I'd say two, two and a half, actually, now okay. thinking about it again. Cool. I think that's fair. And I think I'm probably going to give it something similar. One thing I will say about um, these, I think this is the second Japanese film that we've had on this podcast. And the other one was Audition. Mm -hmm. And that was an absolutely beautiful film. And I think that definitely something that this movie has going for it is it's really, really pretty. Mm -hmm. You could take a shot, like I said, probably from any moment and get just a very cool, interesting looking tableau yeah. that they set up, um, which is which is really commendable. Like these filmmakers know how to make pretty films um, and use color different than I think the American director probably would think. And it is cool to see how it seeps into our films um, here in the States as well. So I got to commend him on that. I think it's fucking, fucking pretty. Um, and they're trying a lot of different things that are definitely within the experimental realm. Um, at a certain point, it gets a little hard to, to stick mm -hmm, with it. This, mm -hmm. It comes, becomes a little like we're moving through the river of blood at the end yeah. there. It's like, okay, we, we got it. So I think I'm also going to give it a, a 2.5 um, oh, out of five. Yeah. It is definitely worth the watch y'all. Yeah. Definitely worth the ride. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out now. Check it Funk out now. soul brother. Well, Connor, thank you for going into the house with me. Thank you for bringing me to your house. You got it. My auntie's house. <laughs> auntie's house. Yes. We did not die because we're not unmarried women. That's true. Yikes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see what we're doing next week. Let's do it. You Where get to. Is, oh, there it is. Right here. Yep. Here As the guest, the you get to pull it. Um, so dig in anywhere you want. Let's dig in. Deep. So what we do here is once you pick it out, um, read the log line first and I'll try to guess to see what it is and then we'll reveal, we'll reveal what we got. Oh, here we go. Santa Claus is actually a demon who lost a bet with an angel. So he becomes the giver of toys and happiness. But when the bet is off, he returns to his evil ways. Oh no. We're watching... Santa's sleigh. Yeah, ah. it is very good. Wow. Impressive. Getting uh getting a little holiday spirit up in this yeah. podcast. It's almost Christmas. Sure. Right? Every day's Christmas for me. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Santa's sleigh. Can't Let's... wait to listen and watch <laughs> alongside. Wow. All right, cool. Well, would you like to plug yourself at all or a I'd anything? I'd love to plug up um 
Well, this podcast, of course. Deadlights. Boom. Check like them that. out. Like that. Follow. Plug. Listen. Subscribe. All those things. Playground Social. Also, great content. PGS Group is coming out with great stuff. Give them, you know, watch all their, you know, YouTube videos. Uh, I do that occasionally, and it's just great to see. Love that. Um, also going to plug another friend, Laura Burkhead. I think her Instagram is laura.burkhead. I don't know. Um, super funny comedian. She's got shows, follower, and yeah. Cool. Definitely check them out. And also, you can give us a call at 773-669-6677. We're looking for horror movie suggestions. We're looking for horror movie stories. We're looking for really anything at all. Whatever you want to share. <laughs> and maybe we'll feature it on the show one yeah. day. We'll see. Talk to us. Um, you can follow me at BP Pritchy T. Um, but until next time, let's get spooky, huh? Ooh. Ooh. We're in the house. Auntie's house is spooky. Ah.